Hi, my name is James Bailey. I'm a teacher of yoga and Ayurveda, and I practice Ayurveda in Pacific Palisades, California. At the moment of our conception, the cosmos recreates itself in miniature, and a one-of-a-kind stellar event results in our unique constitutional nature called Prakriti. Our Prakriti, or our constitution, is unique and differs from all others. No two people will have the exact same constitution. It's traditionally thought that it's a very delicate process. It can be influenced by several factors, including the astrology at the moment of your conception, the constitutional nature of your mother and your father, past life karmas that might be influencing the rebirth, the environment in which you're born, and the, the seasonal influences, the weather effects, and so on and the genetics, what we call kavaigunya, the inheritance of your strengths and weaknesses. The result is that no two of us are the same, not even identical twins. In yoga and in Samkhya philosophy, Prakriti is defined as the dynamic creative forces of nature. So when we use the word Prakriti, we also refer to the larger nature and the elements in nature around us. We also use the word prakriti to define the way nature has expressed itself through us. We borrow the same elements and we use those elements to create a body. This is prakriti. Prakriti is also defined as the divine feminine, the goddess, and in Tantra refer to prakriti as shakti. In clinical Ayurveda, prakriti is defined as our constitution, but more specifically by the relative proportioning of the three doshas. At the moment of our conception, the five elements were brought together and distributed to the individual being conceived in differing proportions. And it's these five elements that give rise to the three doshas. So some of us get more fire element, thus more pitta dosha constitutions. Some people more air elements, they become more vata. And some people more water and earth, so they'll be more kapha, kapha constitutions. Connection is so overwhelmingly important that we often lose sight of the uniqueness of our body-mind constitution. When we deny Prakriti, we're more likely to become sick or imbalanced. When we recognize our unique characteristics and qualities, we're more likely to find balance. The use of one-size-fits-all trends and, and diets usually don't work for more than a small amount of people. Any particular diet is going to work for some people, and the people that it works for are going to be the advocates for it, because they're going to say how well they felt when they did it. But for others, it's not going to work at all. So Ayurveda teaches us that it's important to stay true to our unique constitution, to know what that constitution is, and if we're not sure what that constitution is, to seek a practitioner who can make us very clear about this. Once we have an understanding of that constitution, whether it's predominantly vata or pitta or kapha or combinations, then we know exactly how to manage the body, how to take care of it, and how to prevent disease. I hope you've enjoyed these teachings. You can get these teachings and more in my course, Swastavrita, the Enlightened Self-Care Ayurveda. Namaste.